Upstairs at Frelix, show 115, real one. Captain Cabinets, trapped in cabinets. Can I get out? Will, will he get, get out? out? Cause he will, Captain, Captain Yes, I have seen it. She's not trapped in a cabinet, she's over there. Welcome to the world of Ken Russell. This uh, is two uh, <laughs> insane movies directed by Ken Russell for Vestron. I, and it, it came from the first movie that we're going to talk about, Gothic. Gothic was apparently so popular that Vestron offered him a deal. And he took the deal. And I'm, you know, frankly, I'm glad he took the deal. I, mean, going, I, watched, Go <laughs> I watched Gothic on Saturday afternoon, I think. Just, you know. Just me and me and my wife, we were hanging out. I said, Regan, you got to come in here and see this. And she didn't. <laughs> she was hearing all kinds of screaming and stuff. She's you like, actually <laughs> showed your kid this piece of shit. What, really? No, I didn't. She 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 was like, I'm not going in there. I'm, I'm hearing stuff. I'm not going in there. Uh, OK, so the, Gothic is, is an absolutely batshit crazy movie concocted by Ken Russell about a meeting of creative minds specifically John Polidori and Mary Shelley with her husband, Percy Shelley, when they stayed at Lord Byron's house. There's this, there's this story that goes around. It's probably apocryphal. I don't know if I believe it, that they all gathered together at Lord Byron's house, and they all wrote stories. Uh, John Polidori w would be the creator of the vampire, basically. This is years before Bram Stoker wrote Dracula. He wrote a story called The Vampire, and Mary Shelley, of course, wrote Frankenstein. So it's an all, it's a, it's all a bizarre speculation about what it might have been going on during that time that would eventually yield fruit in both those stories. Uh, and it has a great cast, of course. And the reason I think uh, Bronwyn wanted to watch is because she's a fan of Gabriel Byrne. She loves Gabriel Byrne. She thinks he's hot. I, I thought he was incredibly creepy and weird looking in this movie, but that's just me. And, uh, of course, Natasha Richardson, one of the most beautiful women ever who's no longer with us. It's a very sad yeah, story. Unfortunately, she was a great actress. Too. And, of course, we can't have bizarre shit without having our old friend Julian Sands back with us again, running around naked and, uh. Uh, <laughs> and yelling at Bill Paxton about what he did to his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> you made her a freak! No, but here we got a lot you know, of screaming. At, at least there was no character in this movie with a mesh shirt and leather pants. No, no, no. Instead, they're all dressed like like they belong in an Adam Ant video. Uh, this, yeah, this is this is absolute fucking madness. Watching this movie, I remember because I I did tape it. I taped it off the Vestron tape that I had. And I dubbed it, and I had it for a long time. So I looked at it on HD. It looked, I gotta say, beautiful as usual. Uh, both these movies look fantastic on, on HD, a lot better than they did on VHS. Visually, it's it's a very arresting movie. It has a great score by the great Thomas Dalby. And then we get, like, some woman, naked woman covered in mud with a rat in her. <laughs> okay, that was a fun. Okay, this is funny. I got to tell you the story. Uh, Claire, the girl who plays, it's the other girl in the scenario, the one who isn't Natasha Richardson, I forget her name. Miriam Sear, I believe, is the actress. She's naked, she's covered in mud, and she's got a dead rat between her teeth. My wife looks at looks at this on the screen and says, does she think she's a kitty cat? And I was just like, huh? <laughs> this is like so fucking, I mean, I, I, obviously, I mean, substances are being taken here. They have a seance. They read ghost stories to each other. And then it turns into this uh, weird Overnight nightmare, tripping, blood, n n nipples with eyes in them, and miscarrying babies and stuff like that. Yeah. I am going to preface everything I say here with a grain of salt before I uh, tear this movie to shreds. Mm. Anyway, I do own this movie on Blu-ray. The only reason, and I, I stress this enough, the only fucking reason I own this movie is because I was trying to complete the Vestron Collector series that have been released by Lionsgate. I have every release that they have ever put out. This was the last title that I bought. Well, how many I, titles were in that Vestron collection? Uh, I think there's like either 18 or 20. The last one that came out was Maximum Overdrive. Wow. Oh. Okay, that was the last That's one weird. that came I, out. Wait, Vestron, um, Vestron released Maximum Overdrive? I, wasn't that Carl Lorimar on? Um, that was the re the reason they're putting it under the Vestron label is because Lionsgate has the rights to Maximum Overdrive. So, oh. I mean, dude, there's a lot of movies under the Vestron label that were not released by Vestron. Hmm. They're just they're just putting the label out. They're like uh, Return of Living Dead Three is on this label. Um, Chopping Malls on this label. Now that that technically wasn't a Vestron movie. That was uh, Concord, hmm. but uh, Vestron did release it on home video. But anyway, oh. I digress. Um, I do have this movie on Laserdisc. I picked it up for very, very cheap because I thought the cover was awesome. 
It uh, is an awesome cover, yes. Watching this movie, I did not know what the fuck was going on from real one. Uh, this movie was all over the place. It the editing was so jumping, it was so jarring. I could not make heads or tails of what the fuck was going on. Characters are in one scene the next, and then all of a sudden they're in the next place. It's just, yeah. this movie is so all over the place, so over the fucking top. Yeah. It is so homoerotic. It's very loud, too. It's 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 just, you know, you said they all meet together to tell stories. I'm saying these guys all got together to have a fucking orgy. <laughs> okay. Now, I am not a big Ken Russell fan. I never have been. I think Tommy is a decent movie. Altered, I mean, people say Tommy's one of the best movies ever made. I'm like, no, it's not. Well, I thought, I, no, I, 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 I don't, you don't need to watch them. Just listen to the album. That's really all you need. Um, Altered States, I would go as far as to Although say I did, well, I have to say, I love Jack Nicholson playing the Doctor. I thought he was awesome. I love Elton John as a pinball wizard. Um, I, you know, the thing is, Ken Russell wanted Stevie Wonder for that part, and I wonder how that would play. That would have worked for the obvious reason. But I thought Anne Margaret was so wrong. I thought Oliver Reed was so wrong. I thought a lot of that was wrong. But I think we can both agree that Altered States is probably his best studio work yeah, yeah. That, he, I, that, that he ever did. I agree with you. I did. Well, I did enjoy Crimes of Passion, but... Um, Crimes, you see, I want to see Crimes of Passion, and it's not without not wanting to see it. It's because the I did get it on Laserdisc, and it was rotted to fuck. Oh, that's so it was it was unwatchable, so I couldn't watch it. Um, I have been wanting to see it because I love Kathleen Turner, and yeah. that was like an early, early role for her. And Anthony but, Perkins, I mean, you can't go wrong with that. You know it's going to be can't. weird. But with Gothic, this, was, this movie was just, this was everything I hate about Ken Russell. <laughs> everything I hate about his style of filmmaking is in this movie. I, 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 I don't like it. I just don't. Me and me and Brown, when we're talking, we were trying to do an autopsy on the movie, and what we figured is that there's no focus, there's no real story at work here, and that's the main problem with this. the The actors are so completely invested in the movie. That's why I can't give it a really bad review. I am going to put it on the Meridian scale for this episode, but I can't give it the worst review because the actors are so into it and they're very good. You you are you totally completely fucking believe them. In this movie, not once does anybody take a turn to the camera and say, you believe this? What the fuck are we doing with her? We don't even have a script. Um, I mean, I, I will agree with you. The acting, even from Julian Sands, is actually pretty good. It, it doesn't know what it wants to be. Yes, it's yes, just that's so, it. It's, it's it so doesn't all know, over the place. You said it. You nailed it. It doesn't know what it wants to be. That's one of Ken Russell's big problems. Yeah. He he is very much about his imagery. You know this movie was in the public domain for a while? No, I did not. What, was that um, because of uh, the production company or Vestron? Or? It was. It, well, here's the thing. <clears throat> Vestron never released this movie theatrically. This was a completely 100% independent production. Okay, Vestron picked it up in a distribution deal for home video. That's when it became super popular, and that's when. Now, the, yeah, you got to remember, Vestron at the time didn't have their own theatrical house. Theatrical house, you know, they didn't have their own uh, theatrical company. Dirty Dancing is what kicked that off. Right. After after Gothic had hit, that's when they offered Ken Russell that deal. And then now we're li and then okay, but before we get into Lair of the White Worm, um, Gothic the light the rights had lapsed and it had never hit DVD in an official form. Um, I, there was this old DVD label called Front Row Entertainment. Do you remember them? As a matter of fact, uh, that out of the blue that I that I showed you a picture of. Yep. It's uh it says Front Row Entertainment on the label, but the label. Looks as though it was printed in somebody's computer at home. I mean, it looks like a bootleg. Exactly. That's the thing. Front Row Entertainment, all they did was release public domain stuff. Gothic, for a while, was in the public domain, but then Lionsgate was able to get the rights back. Oh, okay. So, but anyway, now on to the better movie. The, the much better movie. You know, I really, okay, Lair of the White Worm is the second in this deal that he did. I, was Crimes of Passion the third in the in No, Crimes of Passion was New World. Okay, okay. Lair of the White Worm, I, 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 this is another movie that I taped. I had it on on VHS. I didn't bother going down to grab it uh, because there was a very, very lovely HD version of it. And here you have uh, this, okay, the, the main difference between Lair of the White Worm and Gothic is that there's a story here. Yes. And I told you, <laughs> what did I tell you? I told you before to watch it, uh, before you watch it, watch it like it's a comedy because it really works. It is a comedy. This is definitely a parody. It is a satire. And Lair of the White Worm is based on a, another story by Bram Stoker, but 
really, when you look at it, it kind of plays like a variation on Dracula. Because, and you instead, you have this weird worm-worshipping cult instead of uh, vampires. And you have Renfield characters, and you have people uh, who have uncovered a bones, this enormous skull. Uh, there's, a, there's a clash of sensibilities in this movie. You have this adorable musical Scots, Scottish people, in Peter Capaldi and Sammy Davis. And then you have the suave, ultra-cool Brits in Hugh Grant and Amanda Donahoe. This is one of Hugh Grant's first movies before he became a big star. Peter Capaldi eventually became the doctor on Doctor Who. Yep. And so we're seeing a young Peter Capaldi with a Jufro uh, <laughs> wearing kilts and playing a bagpipe. <laughs> <laughs> um, he plays an archaeologist who discovers this enormous skull. So one would assume the skull to belong to a dinosaur, but we get a lot of talk about worms and snakes. Amanda Donahoe, who, who, while she was making this movie, was on L.A. Law as well, the popular show from back in those days. Uh, here's the find on wealthy Hugh Grant's property. She steals the artifact, and she has long fangs and segmented eyes, but she's mad sexy in this movie. Meanwhile, Grant's girl, Catherine Oxenberg, is having Ken Russell hallucinations involving crucifixions, nuns being raped, and snake women with fangs. This would be the worst, most ridiculous movie in the world if Ken Russell had no hand in it. If anyone else other than Ken Russell was directing it, it would be fucking terrible. A hundred percent in agreement with you. This movie would suck if not for Ken Russell. If I tried to direct this, if you tried to, my God, we would totally destroy the whole thing that's going on here. There's a lot that's funny about this movie, but it's very tongue in cheek and we're kept off balance, not knowing whether or not we should take any of this seriously. Donahoe abducts men or boys, bites them. Hugh Grant being a Brit is polite as he makes inqu inquiries. Capaldi and his Scooby gang are searching for the missing skull. Hugh Grant has a bizarre dream about sitting in an airplane watching two stewardesses wrestling. I, this is too weird to be scary. Oh, no. One of my favorite parts in that in that airplane scene is when he has the pencil in his hand and it's, and it's shaped like his dick and it's fucking rising. And it's rising that, as right? he's watching yes. this. Yes, yes. That, that was awesome. There's only the, my only problem is I, I don't know what Russell's point was with this movie. It's a lot about, you know, tying up small women and, and having them be sacrificed to an enormous worm that comes out of a hole. There's all this sexual imagery. Amanda Donahoe is a master scenery chewer, and she steals the show when she walks out, and she's got this enormous strap-on dildo. And it oh, that that was just like oh, I I I just did like the the Ryan Reynolds meme that you see online. I'm just holding my eyes, going, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Seriously, but that was awesome though. I did like that though. And my favorite bit in the movie is when Peter Capaldi dons his kilt and he plays bagpipes to lure the snake creature <laughs> and he's ch and, and the snake creature is chasing him around and he's going around the circle it's just a, you know i mean to me this has got to be the greatest movie i've ever seen in my life watching this i just think it you know what i like you said i went into this thinking of it as a comedy and you know what i laughed a lot during this movie and i laughed because there were some generally funny parts but there were some parts that were so batshit crazy i.e the the dildo scene that that Yes. That was that just made me laugh my ass off. But at the same time, this movie actually had a really good story. It had really good effects. I love the nudity in this movie. Yeah. I'd say the only part that went a little off the rail were the dream sequences and the flashback sequences to the uh, the Jesus being straddled by a worm on the crucifix yes, yes. while Roman soldiers are raping virgins yeah, in yeah. the fucking desert. Yeah. But other than that, man, this is a great movie. It sort of reminded I really me. enjoyed it. You know those weird hallucination scenes in Altered States that reminded me of those. Yeah. Another movie that you could kind of say harkens back to a little bit is The Devils from Ken Russell. Yeah, yeah. The Devils. That's that's one where he goes a little bit overboard, I think. Yeah, but that I one... think I think Ken Russell needs a producer. He needs somebody to say, You're going a little too far. Let's let's really in a little bit. Remember, we got we want people to watch the movie. We don't want people to uh, you know, be grossed out by it or anything. The way I see it is okay, and I'm not, I'm not I'm not speculating or going slanderous here, but uh, it seems like Ken Russell either had a severe bout of ADHD or he did a shitload of cocaine back in those days <laughs> because that's sure what these movies feel like. But I'd say this: if uh, if Ken Russell really did have ADHD, it seems like he got it really really under control when he made Lair of the White Worm. Yeah, Lair of the White Worm is a much better movie than Gotham. Um, I have to do my Meridian skill for Goth uh, I'm sorry, Gothic, sorry. I kept doing that. I kept calling it Gotham. Gotham was a movie with Tommy Lee Jones and Virginia Madsen, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, that, that's a little... I don't know about that one. Never heard of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, on the Meridian scale, I'm going to give... You might not agree with me on this, but I'll give Gothic a solid five. I'm going to put it in the middle. I think it was a better movie than Meridian. I think it was a better movie than Boxing Helena. <laughs> 
I am going to give it a two because the acting was the only good part of this movie. But on uh, the Meridian meter, what are we going to give Lair of the White Worm? Oh, Lair of the White Worm gets up. It's, it doesn't even belong on the Meridian scale. Oh, it doesn't it belong. It really doesn't. Okay. It's, 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 it's a good movie. It's a good movie. I, you know, the thing about it is I'm, I'm reminded of Roger Ebert's review for The Devil's Rejects. Uh, he said, it's a great movie. I love it, but I can't recommend it to anybody because they'll be giving me funny looks for the rest of my life. I can't really recommend this movie. It's weird. It's, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Lair of the White Worm. I can't recommend it to people because they'll be giving me funny looks for the rest of my life. I can't disagree with that. I mean, I would not tell anybody to go out there and watch this movie unless they were a diehard horror movie fan. And or just or a diehard Peter Capaldi fan, you know? Or, yeah, it's just to say, hey, you want to see Doctor Who before he was Doctor Who? Yeah. But here's but here's but it's not for Hugh Grant people. No, you do not. not. Hey, you want to see? Hey, you like Notting Hill? You'll love Lair of the White Worm. So here's our here's our final thing that threw me for a loop. So Amanda Donahoe, I had no idea who she was, but she looked so fucking familiar to me. I couldn't place her. So I looked her up on uh, Wikipedia. I almost shit myself when I found out she was in Liar Liar. That's right. She was uh, she was the the woman that was being accused of. No, that was Jennifer Tilly. Oh, this was talk. this this was one of the uh, partners in his law firm. He was the one who, after he had sex with, she goes, "So was it good for you?" He's like, "I've had better." <laughs> and right. that was her. I, I could not mean. It's just her with an American accent, long jet black hair. It looked right. nothing like her in Lair of the White Worm, and it, that threw me for a damn loop. That, that was that same lady. I couldn't believe it. Well, I, she does have one uh, characteristic about her: her eyes. She has, oh, them eyes. The the eyes, Chico. They never lie. Yeah, she she has. That's that's definitely something that that stays with you is her eyes. It's probably why Ken Russell cast her because she has kind of like a strange, tall, snake like body. Yeah, it's like she's like well, she's got to be at least six three, six four. Yeah, she's a very, very, very tall woman there. But it, but you know what? With that height, she commanded that role, and she was very intimidating because of her height and because of those eyes, and it and it worked. They, like. Her performance in this movie worked so well on so many levels. That's why I was able to actually take this movie and the, and her performance very seriously. Yeah. And she does chew the scenery, but it's it's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. So it was a very good. I'm glad we're ending it on this one because that that was a. <laughs> I guess that was the way it was meant to be. We started yep. off with Gotham and we end with the. I couldn't find any um, Ken Russell titles to present or something that might go along, but this is the closest thing I could come to, something that might be considered a Ken Russell-ish movie, even though it's not as visually crazy. This is Daughters of Darkness. It's a VHS. Can you open the gatefold? It comes in a gatefold. It's on the front. No, no, no. Wait, what? That's right here. I'm a genius. Open that. Uh -huh. And as you can see, it has a gatefold on the inside of it. Uh, has liner notes by William Lustig, if you can read that. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm, I understand on the Laserdisc and then the resulting DVD, he also does commentary. This is like a favorite film of his, so he talks a lot about the visual quality and also some of the happy accidents that occurred during the filmmaking. Uh, for instance, I remember there was a story where so, there, were, there was a problem with the negative or when the film was being developed. It caused a couple of weird scratches or, or white marks on the film itself. So Harry Kumel, who, who directed the movie, added thunder uh, sounds to it to make it look like it was part of the film. This is a weird kind of sexy softcore vampire movie back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And um, it has one of the original cast members, I believe, from Dark Shadows is in it too. Can we see the back cover? A fairy tale for adults. Subtle, stately, stunningly colored, and exquisitely directed. The most artistic vampire shocker since Blood and Roses. In 1971, this movie came out in the U.S. And it was cut by more than 12 minutes. It was given an X rating. You know, it's uh, it's just kind of a classic movie. Uh, but you see here, Video Treasures uh, produced this package. But it is actually a very good quality package. A good sound for it. Uh, Video Treasures was one of those really, really cheap companies back in the day like and and also it's distributed by anchor bay here it's probably why it's a better um a better release than most video treasures things because the anchor bay people did a really good job of restoring this can you show me the spine good job 
Daughters of Darkness. It's a very, it's a very nice package. Um, did not have like uh, a DVD player for the time. And also, I didn't find it on Laserdisc, so I just grabbed this because I love VHS. Anyway, thanks for watching.